This is the most kissed face in the world. If you work in the healthcare industry, you probably kissed her without you realizing it. The face you're looking at is the face that adorns the faces on CPR dummies. She's the unknown woman of the Seine River, and here is her story. In the late 1880s, a group of young boys was playing by the Seine River in Paris when they spotted the body of a young woman floating in the water. They quickly alerted the authorities, and the woman's body was retrieved from the river. There were no wounds on her to indicate a struggle before her death. It was believed that she had died by drowning and it wouldn't have been surprising if she had done so by her own wishes. It wasn't an uncommon way to die if somebody wished to at the time. As per custom, she was taken to the morgue for examination. The morgue in Paris where Lincagne de la Seine was taken was located at Quai de l'Arcavesh. This morgue was well known in Paris at the time and was a popular tourist attraction, with people coming to view the bodies on display as a form of entertainment. The morgue was open to the public, and bodies that were found in the Seine or in the streets of Paris were put on display for identification purposes. Visitors to the morgue could see the bodies through large glass windows and would often gather outside to discuss and speculate on the identities and causes of the death of the deceased. People would read newspapers in the morning about the bodies on display that day and the specific circumstances in which the bodies were found. In the 18th century, sex was a taboo topic that many people avoided discussing openly. Sex was viewed primarily as a means of procreation within the context of marriage, and any sexual activity outside of this context was considered sinful and immoral. The 18th century people did not have access to the internet, and looking at the bodies of deceased men and women found in the city was probably the only way for them to satisfy a bit of their sexual curiosity outside of marriage if they do not engage in affairs. This was during the time when women dressed in outfits that covered their entire bodies from head to toe, and a time when people couldn't gain access to sexual content easily. It was a sexually repressed time. The morgue was a place where they could explore part of their sexual curiosity and fantasies, without it being taboo. In fact, it was part of everyday life for many people including some curious children. It was many men's and women's favorite activity at the time. If I wasn't being clear. Yes, the bodies were often displayed nude. Especially if they were the bodies of young beautiful women like the girl from the Seine. She was estimated at only about 16 years old. While the idea of visiting a morgue for entertainment may seem macabre by modern standards, it was a common practice at the time. For many people, the morgue was a source of fascination and a way to satisfy their curiosity about death and mortality. The popularity of the Paris morgue declined in the early 20th century, as attitudes toward death and public displays of bodies changed. Today, the building that housed the morgue is a museum dedicated to the history of the Paris police, and visitors can still see the room where the bodies were once displayed. Attempts were made to identify the young teenage girl in the Seine River but nobody came to claim her. They only stared. While she was there, a pathologist who worked on her was mesmerized by her beauty and the serene expression on her face. According to the story, he was so struck by her that he decided to create a plaster cast of her face, a process known as a death mask. Death masks were commonly made in the late 19th century as a way of preserving the features of notable people after their deaths or as a means of studying the anatomy of the human face. The pathologist reportedly used a technique that involved coating the woman's face in plaster while it was still covered in a layer of wax, which helped to preserve the fine details of her features. The resulting death mask was considered a masterpiece of the art form, and its beauty and enigmatic expression captured the imaginations of artists and intellectuals of the time. It was customary at the time that dead bodies should be buried within three days. And so there was another reason to make a cast of her face, other than for the purpose of admiring her beauty after death. The bodies would start to rot in about three days, sometimes less, depending on the state the body was found in. If anyone wanders in to look for her, but her body was already buried, it wouldn't be fun to dig up the rotting corpse again. So, the mask served as a way for future visitors curious about her to make sure she wasn't a family member or friend they were looking for. What we do know, however, is that the pathologist who made a cast of her face didn't keep her face in the morgue for the only purpose of identifying her. 
No, he took the mask out of the morgue where for some unknown reason, more replicas of it were made. Copies of the Seine River Girl's face then began appearing on the walls of people's homes all across Paris and other parts of Europe. The enigmatic expression and timeless beauty of Lincoln de la Seine has captured the imagination of writers, artists, and intellectuals for more than a century. Many writers have taken inspiration from the death mask to create a background story about the mysterious young woman. In the early 20th century, the French writer Romain Roland wrote a play called Lincoln de la Seine, which he imagines a romantic story of a young woman who falls in love with a lover, but cannot marry him for social reasons. In modern history, the mysteries surrounding Lincoln de la Seine continue to inspire writers and artists. In 2018, French author Didier Ducoin envisioned the story of a Japanese woman sent to France to learn the art of gardening and got entangled in a love story. The title was The Office of Gardens and Ponds. Other writers and artists have used the death mask as a visual motif or inspiration for their work, with stories of her as a witch, an orphan, a victim of crime, or a broken-hearted lover. But of course, that's just the writer's take on the girl's backstory, not based on evidence of what we know about her. It's even believed that Picasso had a mask of her in the room where he made many of his famous paintings. There is a popular theory that the girl may have been the model for Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting, The Mona Lisa. This theory is based on similarities between the two women's facial features, particularly their enigmatic smiles. Proponents of this theory argue that da Vinci may have been inspired by the plaster death mask to create the enigmatic expression of the Mona Lisa. It also was quite coincidental that the woman was retrieved from the Seine River, less than 200 meters from where the painting of Mona Lisa was hung in the Louvre. While the theory that Lincoln de la Seine was the model for the Mona Lisa remains a subject of interest and fascination for many people, it is widely considered to be unfounded and lacking in credible evidence. For a while, her face may have inspired a generation of girls who tried to emulate her features. Over time, however, she fades into a forgotten part of history. Until, something happened that would zap her back to people's collective memory. In the 1950s, a Norwegian toy maker named Asman Lerdal was trying to create a new kind of CPR training dummy as per a doctor friend's request. He wanted to make a dummy that would be more lifelike and realistic than anything that had come before. This toymaker decided that the face on the CPR dummy should be female, as he worried that some men would not want to participate in CPR training if they had to kiss a doll of the same gender as them. Remembering that his aunt had a mask of a beautiful sleeping woman on her wall, he decided to borrow the mask. Lerdl's team decided to use the peaceful expression of the woman in the Seine as the model for the face of their new CPR dummy, which they called Resusayan. The idea was that by giving the dummy a human-like face, it would be easier for people to remember how to perform CPR correctly. Since then, Resusayan has become the gold standard for CPR training around the world, and her face has become instantly recognizable to anyone who has taken a CPR course. Her face has helped train hundreds of millions of people in CPR, and no doubt helped save many lives in the process. CPR training has helped save 2 million lives so far. The identity of the woman in the Seine remains a mystery to this day, and there have been many theories and speculations about who she might have been. Who she might have been. One theory about the identity of the woman in the Seine is that she might have been a model or an actress. This theory is based on the woman's striking beauty and her peaceful expression, which some have interpreted as a kind of state. According to this theory, the woman might have been a model or an actress who was looking for work in Paris. She might have been lured into a dangerous situation, being alone and afraid, and with virtually no hope of a stable role, she might have taken her own life out of desperation or despair. While this theory is compelling, there is little hard evidence to support it. Another theory about the identity of the woman in the Seine is that she might have been a sex worker. This theory is based on the fact that the area around the Seine where her body was found was known to be a gathering place for sex workers at the time. Some have pointed to the fact that the woman was found with no identification and that her clothing was relatively high-end, suggesting that she might have been someone who catered to wealthy clients as she was working there at the time. Bodies of women who were in that line of work were found in the Seine River every day at the time, 
so it's possible that she could have been one of them. Most of the women had jumped into the river themselves, but there were those who were murdered. But of course, without concrete evidence, we can't know for certain who she was and why she may have decided to end it all. Some believe that the woman had arrived from elsewhere in Europe, which would explain why no one came to claim her. Everyone who knew her personally would have been too far away to look there. The girl was taken for burial three days after arriving at the morgue. The burial of the woman in the Seine was a simple affair, with few if any mourners present. She was buried in an unmarked grave. One possibility of identifying her is to find records of where bodies in the morgue were taken to. There may have been thousands if not hundreds of thousands of bodies. It would be a daunting task to sort through all the bones, but with advancing technology, we may be able to one day conduct facial reconstruction within a few seconds of scanning the skulls. From there, we can narrow down which set of remains may have belonged to the girl. We can then try and extract DNA from the bones to match it to living descendants. Nearly one and a half centuries later, some records may still exist of people's not too distant ancestors. Perhaps someone had a great-great-grandparent who was missing a daughter, or a niece of a great-great-granduncle who was given up for adoption. Maybe they can give us clues as to what happened that made the girl end up there. Did she run away from home? Did she move away to start a career in acting? It would be a tremendously difficult task to pin down who she was, and we currently don't have enough vested interests to generate enough funding to start such a huge project. Perhaps the girl from the Seine will remain nameless for the rest of time. For now, she'll continue to help train millions of people all across the world in how to perform a procedure that could have saved her life. A very noble ending to her tragically short life. Thank you for watching until the end.